Got to start with Elon Musk and what I'm calling the chaos at Twitter. What do you make of this, David? Quick comment. You know that uh, Twitter uh, has $600,000 of revenue per employee and Apple has two and a half million dollars of revenue per employee. (laughs) And that was in the text that they released that Elon Musk had before. I think that's a huge driver of what he's saying. They have too many people for the revenue they have. David Barnson is here. You wrote the book called No Free Lunch. It seems to me that Congressman Clyburn was being honest. I think he's only being half honest because it's what he didn't say. The biggest inflationary impact of what they did was the incentives to take workers out. And that put downward pressure on supply, which put prices higher. So I think, and that's permanent. See, the sugar rush of spending from that money, that goes away. But the long-term debt doesn't, and the labor force impact doesn't. That's the bigger problem that the Democrats are going to have to deal with, that our whole country has to deal with. David, you're, you're a pure financial guy. I know you dabble in politics. Yeah. But when you're, you know, you're moving money around, do you care about the elections in November? Yeah, I dabble in politics because politics dabbles in me. Uh, Politics infects markets. Politics affects our clients. Um, But the fact of the matter is that you could argue it's better for him to be away, that when he's when he's there, he's doing more harm. And so all these vacation days are fine. But, you know, what they're doing is how he got elected president. Through COVID, he got to go hide in his basement. It's the basement strategy. And, and I think that that's what they're doing now. And they it's the best option. It because they can't keep him completely away no. from the media. No, that's I mean, right. At some point, they're going to shout a question, yeah. and he's got a problem. Yeah, and then when he goes off script, that's where, usually where he gets in trouble. But you've got more bad news for Meta this Yeah, week. and also you just heard Mark Mahaney. He seems to be bullish on Meta because you have a low bar heading into their earnings. He hasn't got much to show for his goggles and Metaverse no, and 10 billion dollars, that's the problem. That's why the stock is down 60% this year. And David, you wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. I wouldn't. It's down 65% from its high a year ago. Snap, by the way, is down 92%. And when we talk about greater traffic, more users, you can argue that's a bad thing since they keep losing money per user. If you can't monetize, so it becomes more popular, it's more hip, people like it. It doesn't matter if they don't pay you. You have to get paid and you have to buy stocks at reasonable valuations. These stocks were so overpriced a year ago, it's sad. Verizon, they came out earlier this morning too. Tell me what... Yeah, what so the, look at these, this decline. Yeah, fonts. you know, actually it wasn't a terrible quarter because I think they had a better sales and profit number, but it's a smaller number of prepaid, postpaid net ads and subscriptions to their to their phone. What, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but weren't you big on Verizon? It still am. We like the stock a lot, but you just have to be very patient with it because, to her point, the, mm. when they have lower amount of prepaids, people then have to put out into the future when but, it's going to pay off. It's a high capex stock. They have to spend what, a lot of money to what make. What dividend money. does it pay at thirty five? Oh, at thirty five, the dividend's over seven percent. Wow. Is it secure? Very secure. They're not going to cut that dividend. What about? So yeah. we talked about AT and T yeah. yesterday, yes. which paid a five to six percent, and that stock rallied after their and earnings. they cut their dividend. In in half and and we sold after AT&T. Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah, yeah, so they and they they lost just hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, the Direct TV acquisition was very expensive. The Time Warner thing was a disaster, and AT and T was what we sold to buy Verizon about four or five years ago. But oh. the whole space has really struggled quite a bit. CSX. Yeah. Let's get to that. They're up two percent. What do they do right? Yeah, so we will talk about value, right? And boring is good in these type of environments. So the stock is rallying after better results, which means higher ship volume higher prices that they're charging to ship the goods. Is that also an indication that maybe things are moving a lot better in the economy than people had anticipated? Maybe. The, the transportation is generally a leading indicator, so that's a good sign. David, any chance of a 10% mortgage rate? Uh, no, no chance. No chance of a 7% 10-year bond yield. And um, ultimately, there's a level which housing prices correcting could be a good thing. They were overpriced. Mm-hmm. They need a correction that's too high. But that kind of a drop, 40%, that can't happen without a huge collateral damage in other parts of the economy. But a 10 to 15 percent repricing could be very healthy. A lot of people can't get a house with their kids and grandkids. It's too expensive. They're the ones now complaining about the home price appreciation that they were liking a few years ago. OK, uh, go on, but that's not going to be healthy for people who bought at elevated prices. They're going to be well, well, they need upset. to sell. It's yeah. not. But if they just go home and live in their house, it shouldn't matter. Much. But guys, what is the peak interest rate then? Because I think Wall Street has it at four and a half by March next year. Yeah, I will say that I've been wrong on this. And uh-huh. so take my answer with a grain of salt. Okay. <laughs> I think we're right there that the 10-year can't go much higher than about four and a half.
I happen to agree with David, though I believe the federal funds rate will probably peak at about, what is it, 4.63%. So we have a ways to go. About 4.63. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. About. Well, th- th- I like that. This sounds yeah. positive to me. If we're peaking just above 4% on the 10-year... But how long do you stay there? That's the key. How long do they leave it at that kind of terminal rate, right? Yeah, but isn't that good news for the economy? Though? They go ahead and they pull 70 economists. And what they are now saying is that next year, 2023, the average monthly increase by payrolls will be 28,000 new jobs per month. That's it. We had, that's it. That's all. We had 263,000 in September. If that forecast is roughly accurate, you are going to have quite a slowdown by the economy, oh. if not a recession. And I would believe that once that uh, recession strikes, your 10-year Treasury yield now at about four and a quarter percent will go down to three and a half percent, if right. not lower. And of course, the Fed oh. will begin to cut rates uh, pretty aggressively. And the market will see that coming and rally. Correct. Months in advance. You could end up having big job losses while the stock market's going higher and everyone being confused. And yet that's normally what Well, they're does saying happen. that the market's already pricing in those, those cuts Very right much. now. Totally agree with that. This yeah. is the most uh, enlightening economic discussion I've had in some time. <laughs> hey, we've got to get this in. You're here to give us your uh, uh, dividend picks. And I want to start with Lamar Advertising. Never heard of it. Yeah, it's a smaller cap company, only about $2 billion in size, but it's come down this year about a 6% dividend yield. The family who started the company 100 years ago, they still own 20% of the stock. Great alignment with shareholders. They grow the dividend every year. They make billboards, uh, digital oh. billboards oh. that do advertising all over. Quickly, Molus, yeah. I know that they are a financial services company. Specifically, they're an investment bank, but they don't do all the trading and all that stuff that Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley do. It's just advisory, so they get fees to advise on deals. Okay. They came down. They pay special dividends every year. This is about a 7% dividend yield. So both Lamar and Molis are new stocks we've bought in the last few weeks because of the market downturn. Is that 7% Molis dividend safe? Yes, it is. Secure. We will never buy a stock that doesn't have a safe and secure dividend yield, my friend. All right, good stuff. David, thank you very much for spending time with us. Thanks, we appreciate David. that.